Today is August 29th, 2009, and that is a 1909 Wright Military Flyer. The first Army pilots learned to fly and its ancestor at this location about 100 years ago. That is Dave Clemmer, a distinguished Army aviator. Uh, when the pilot's ready to take off, he pulls the trigger, and three seconds and 60 feet later, he's in the air. The system never failed, the Wright brothers, in um, all the times that they used it. When Wilbur Wright was here in 1909, um, he did do an experiment where he laid out an extra long track and did not use the tower to mechanical, and it worked perfectly well. But this allowed them to uh, be able to take off and Greg Combs hiding himself from me behind his engine. This is a completely airworthy flyable aircraft. It has not flown yet, and that's why we're not trying to do that today. What's in the museum right now is a static, non-airworthy reproduction of the Model B, which was the airplane that was created um, after this one, after the military mission. This certainly does have a real engine. Um, the 1908 flyer, after it crashed, the only thing that survived the crash was the, was the engine, and the Wright brothers used it on the 1909 machine. The original 1909 machine itself was decommissioned by the Army in 1911 and put in the Smithsonian. It remains there to this day. That's the right elusive Greg Cohn there yeah, hiding, hiding his face from us, um, but working on the bottom of the airplane. Ken and his team were allowed to go up into the airplane. It's suspended from the ceiling of the Air and Space Museum and open the engine. From the rail <laughs> and bridle as it was during launches a hundred years ago. Oh, they loved each other. This is just a unique sound. It's the first time you're going to hear this, or anybody's heard this in a hundred years. There's the air boss, Ken High. A lot of confidence today. I'm going to start. The breeze feels good. That's a tribute to Ken and his great team, and especially my good friend Greg Cohn, who built that engine. Exactly like the right built airs.
Take a look at the magneto and the radiator and piping. And of course the fuel tank. You notice that the top part of the front canard, Orwell still didn't like the stability when he moved this airplane over here. So he took the top off and he moved it aft and you can see it through the wires and stuff back there. Very thin piece of canard between the empennage and the back of the main planes. I noticed a look of uh, shock on your face when it started on the first pull. <laughs> Nicely put. I was actually getting electrocuted. I, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't uh, uh, record it for posterity, but uh, you pretty well got this thing down now, don't you? Yeah, but see, I learned something every time. This time when it started, I learned not to wear a short sleeve shirt because when you're adjusting the spark advance, you're leaning your arm against the contact switch, so you're getting voltage from your elbow down to your hand. So, yeah, I, I did look shocked. Congratulations <laughs> again. Yeah, it worked again. You, you do it good. Is that a contact 